the students try to pay minimums and we try to get more. And one rule of thumb is that the literary property, that is the novel and the script, or the, just the script, might be worth 5% of the budget with a floor and a ceiling. So what I'm going to ask Paul is 5%, the minimum against 5% of the budget. Now, the word budget is defined uh, very um, specifically in the contract that Eric is talking about. Um, there are budgets and there are budgets, as uh, those of you who are writer-producers know. Um, and what we're talking about is a defined term, uh, usually the shorthand for it is this final shooting budget, excluding agency commissions, finance charges, and uh, the studio will try to exclude as much as possible from that definition of budget, and Eric will try to include as much as possible from that definition of budget. And I'm one of the great ex experts in catastrophes because I represent the Michael Cimino, who is Henry <laughs> Gate, and various uh, <laughs> others. So what mm -hmm. the studio wants to do is limit it to budget, not cost, because if the picture costs more money than the budget, the writer should not benefit from that disaster. And usually the, the reason that the cost is much higher than the budget, the argument is that the reason that the cost is usually so much higher than the budget is because of the actor, because of the director, or because of something else, but not because of the writer, of course. And one thing that I would like for the writer to get is he uh, have access to the set uh, and be consulted so that he has a chance to be part of the production. On the other hand, uh, the writer generally is considered a leper, and people don't want him around. <laughs> uh -huh. um, unlike, the, unlike the Screen Actors Guild and unlike the uh, Directors Guild, where, for example, if the set is uh, uh, more than 100 miles away from where the director or the actor lives, you have to fly that actor first class or that director first class to the location, put him up in a first class hotel and all of that. The writer's guild has no provisions on this area whatsoever because it's rare that the studio will even give the writer uh, a room at the Motel 6 near the set uh, <laughs> to stay in to um, be able to uh, participate meaningfully in the uh, final uh, shooting script. And it's the joke of the Polish solid to the sleep with the writer. So the deal um, that Eric wants and that the studio uh, uh, will end up giving only if it, you know, the develop my executive comes to me and says we really have to get this script. This is a terrific script. I don't tell Eric how much the studio actually wants this script, but I just tell him that yeah, you know, we'll, we'll give you five percent of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, purchase price uh, as the option fee. Everybody knows uh, what an option and a purchase is, by the way, or should I explain that very briefly? Okay, an option is um, it's a lot like leasing your car. You pay so much a month to lease your car, and at the end of the lease, you can purchase that car for a set amount of money that you negotiate right when you first sign the leasing agreement. Well, an option in Hollywood, an option slash purchase in Hollywood is very similar. The only difference is instead of having to wait for the end of the lease to purchase the script, the studio can exercise the option and purchase this, the script at any time during the option period. Option periods are usually about two, sometimes three years these days because it takes so long to attract a director, to attract um, uh, cast uh, to the project and the projects uh, end up in development for uh, two, three, four years. Usually the studio will negotiate for a two-year deal up front and then sometime toward the end of the second year if the project is still um, in development and things are moving forward, I would come back to Eric and say, you remember that deal we negotiated about a year and nine months ago? Well, it's about to be up, I need another year, and I would offer Eric some additional money for that additional year. And usually the second option payment is not applicable against the purchase. Right. So that if the purchase let's use some simple numbers, if the option payment was ten thousand dollars for the first year and fifteen thousand dollars for the second year, that ten thousand dollars would be uh, applicable against the purchase price, but the fifteen thousand dollars would not be. 
So if the purchase price was uh, $100,000, again, I'm just using some rough numbers for ease of uh, example, um, the writer would end up getting 115, no, sorry, uh, $105,000. The $10,000 that the writer originally got um, was applicable against the purchase price, the $15,000 was not. So the writer would get a purchase price of $105,000 when the option is exercised. And usually the studio tries to extend the option period if there's an event of force majeure. Yes. Like, uh, it's hard to conceive of, but shouldn't there be a strike, for example? <laughs> <laughs> um, in every option agreement that I've ever drafted, and I'm sure Eric is the same way when he represents uh, the producer that's uh, by the way, it's almost always the lawyer that represents the optioner, the one who is uh, doing the option with the writer, that will end up drafting up the long-form contract. Um, and in every contract that I've ever drafted on behalf of a producer or on behalf of Warner Brothers, when I was Warner Brothers, um, there is this clause that says that the option period is told. The clock starts, stops ticking um, for whatever period of time uh, there's a force majeure event. For example, in addition to the um, to the strike that's happening now, years ago when the Northridge earthquake hit, that was a force majeure event, um, which people uh, argued it would toll the auction period. And the only question was for how long? You know, how long did that force majeure event actually last? Was it the 14 minutes of the earth that the earthquake actually lasted, or the four minutes, or whatever it was? that the earthquake actually lasted, or was it for some reasonable period of time after until the studios were, were back up and running? And, and the answer was the latter. It was for some reasonable period of time uh, until the studios were back functioning at 100%. And there's all kinds of definitions of force majeure. War, for example. I negotiated a deal in China where I needed the, the Chinese army, and their definition of force majeure is they did not have to supply the army if there was a war with Russia. Any other war was fine, but the one with Russia didn't have to survive.